People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. A tele-reminder from Teleradio Marcelo, ang tele-aralan ng bawat malulenyo. Manood na sa teleradyo Makinig manood na sa teleradyo 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 Marcelo Sa gitna ng mapanubok na pa Ladies and gentlemen In a few minutes We will be on a live broadcast Please stand by the ultimate goal of farming is not the growing of crops, but the cultivation and perfection of human beings. A blessed good day, everyone. It's an honor and privilege to be a part of this historic era. Despite of the pandemic that we have, we stand the test of time. As we plant the seeds of learning in our minds and water it, with the sweat of perseverance, until such time, we are the one to harvest the fruits of our effort, will broaden our horizon toward the green pastures of tomorrow. Magandang, 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 magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Del Pilarians, it's nice to be back. It's nice to see you once again. This is your Sir Archie Villanca Pajardo, ang kakwela mo. And welcome to my segment, Agri Escuela. Only here on Teleradio Marcelo, ang telearalan ng bawat malulenyo. Before anything else, let me thank the following to our ever dearest school principal, Dr. Maria Victoria C. Vivo, our department head. Mrs. Berhenia de Guzman, TLE Department, Grade 9-1, and to my advisory class, 922, friends, ladies and gentlemen, and to all the teachers and staff at Bagong Silang Elementary School, Port Avenue, Caloocan City, good morning. Today, I'm lucky enough to discuss with you the topic for quarter four, week one, lesson one. Under agricultural crops production for grade nine, recycling and composting farm waste. But before anything else, I want to hear from you, my avid listeners, to comment down below your name, grade, and section so that I could recognize each and every one of you. To begin with, let us recap our previous lesson starting from quarter number one with top five quiz of the day. This is how you're going to play. Each question has many possible answers. Write down one answer or comment your one answer on the comment box. Then if your answer is in the top five, then you get the corresponding points to that particular answer. I will give you at least five seconds to answer or comment your answer down below the comment box. Are you ready, Del Pilarians? 
is the first question. The first question. Give me at least examples of farm tools. I think this is our previous lesson during quarter number one. Again, give me at least one example of farm tools. Ready in five, four, three, two, and one. Are you ready for your answer? So uh, I'm looking for the top answer for you to get the plus 10 for that particular question number one. Ready. For our number five answers, we have sprinkler. So you have additional two points if you tend to answer sprinkler. The point answer, we have pick mato. I think you have already discussed and have you have been familiarized with this kind of farm tools, which is our previous lesson during our quarter number one. The third uh, top answer, we have bolo. So this is a kind of cutting tool used in farm and agricultural purposes. Our top two answer, we have hand trowel. Okay. What is our top answer for the example of farm tool used in agricultural and horticultural purposes? Our top answer for plus 10, we have. So, so shovel is our top answer for you to have the plus 10 points. So this is very familiar among you, among our farmers and our dear agricultural students the use of shovel as a farm tool. Let's proceed with question number two. Question number two. Give me at least an example of farm equipment. Again, for question number two, give me at least an example of farm equipment. Ready? In five, four, three, two, and one. I think this topic is already discussed during our quarter number one again under lesson number two. All examples of farm equipment. Ready? For our top five answers, we have rice harvester. So you are going to have additional two points for your answer, rice harvester. What about the fourth one? The fourth one, we have grass cutter. So you have your plus three for grass cutter. We have number three, we have thresher. So this is a, an equipment used for uh, the extraction of palai uh, being used by our farmers in the rice field. Next, for plus seven, top two answer, we have four wheel tractor. So it is used for poor, uh, land cultivation and an equipment used for uh, digging and extraction of the cultivation of the land. Next, our top answer for the farm equipment, we have the hand tractor, very common farm equipment used by our dear farmer to cultivate the land. Next, let's proceed with question number three. For question number three, we have what are the different methods of waste disposal. Again, for, uh, for question number three, what are the different methods of waste disposal? I think this is our lesson during the second quarter week number two. Again, five, four, three, two, and one. For five possible answers, for five, for number five, we have plasma gasification for plus two. So again, we're looking for the top five methods of waste disposal. Number four, we have incineration. So that is the fourth possible answer. Next, aside from incineration, we have number three, we have landfill. So for plus five, top three answer is landfill. What about the second one? 
The second one, we have composting or plus 7. So that is the second top answer. And what will be our top answer for plus 10? The common methods of waste disposal, of course, number 1 is recycling. There you have it. Our top 5 best methods of waste disposal. Next, question number 4. Question number 4. What are the factors to consider in selecting the site for planting vegetable crops? Again, for question number 4. What are the factors that we need to consider in selecting the site for planting vegetable crops? In 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So what are the possible answers? For number 5, we have topography of the land. Of course, we need to consider how the topography of the land being affected on the planting of different vegetable crops. That is our top 5 or number 5 answer. What about number 4? Number 4 is the climatic requirements. So number 4, climatic requirements. Of course, we need to consider the different climate in a certain locality or site for us to plant different uh, vegetable crops. So we need to consider how cold or hot, how hot the area is for us to plant different vegetable crops. Next, for question number three, oh, sorry, for, uh, for answer number three, top three, we have the different types of soil. So we need also to consider the different types of soil, particularly planting vegetable or different vegetable crops as something with the different types of soil for them to grow properly. Next. Top two answer for plus seven, we have water and drainage. Of course, that is our number two answer, the water and drainage. So we should be considered how water and drainage has been utilized in planting different vegetable crops. For our top ten, uh, for our top one answer for plus ten, we have, of course, the sun. The amount of sunlight is the very most important factor that we need to consider in selecting the site for planting vegetable crops because the sunlight will determine the growth and the proper growth of our vegetable crops. Next, let's proceed with question number five. For question number five, what are the different types of soil or the different soil types? Ready? In five, four, three, two, and one. Again, what are the different types of soil? For, quest, uh, for question number five, number five answer, we have the peat soil. So the peat soil, for your information, is the kind of soil wherein it needs more water because it easily dry. Next. Number four, we have the chalk soil. So this is another kind of soil for, uh, for plus three. What about uh, for top three? The top three, we have clay soil. The clay soil as a type of soil is very rich in what we call potassium. And it is uh, almost used in different vegetable crops production. What about number two? Number two is the sandy soil. From the words, uh, root word sand, it consists of different particles, especially the sand. So it is more used as our different types of soil for uh, top two. And then the top soil that we need to discuss, we have the long soil. So it is what? It is very useful. It is the first type of soil that uh, we need to consider in what? planting different vegetable crops. For question number six. For question number six, very fresh from your, from our topic previously, I think this is under quarter number three. What are the different kinds of nurseries? Again, what are the different kinds of nurseries? For number five answer, we have flower plant nursery for plus two. Again, 
what are the different kinds of nurseries? For number five, we have the flower plant nursery. From the word itself, it deals with what? With the proper maintain, maintain, uh, maintenance of different varieties of flower. Next, for number four, we have the fruit nursery. So from the word itself, it deals with what? The different varieties of fruits being cultivated and being uh, propagated. Next, number three, we have the vegetable nursery. So for number three, we have the vegetable nursery dealing with the different varieties and kinds of vegetable. For those who are vegetarian, I think this kind of nursery is very suitable for you. Next, for number two, we have permanent nurseries. So this is a kind of nursery wherein it is a lot, uh, it is intended for permanent or what we call lifelong process. And then for the top one answer, we have the temporary nursery. But in transplanting is very useful in this kind of nursery. After you have been uh, in the nursery, then there's a time for you to transplant the different kinds of seedlings present in the temporary nursery. From temporary, it will be permanent. Next, for question number seven. Question number seven, what are the common insect pests in the nursery? Again, I'm looking for five possible answers. What are the common insect pests in the nursery? Again, five, four, three, two, and one. Again, what are the common insect pests in the nursery? For uh, for. For number five answer, we have paddy stem borer. So this is a kind of insect wherein the stem is being utilized by this kind of insect or pest. Next, for number four, we have the swarming caterpillar. Okay, so as we all know, this is a kind of pest wherein it is developed from pupa up to caterpillar and then it destroys usually the leaves of the plants. Next, for number three, we have the rice case worm. This is very wet. This is very harmful in terms of our dear farmers who have been planting rice in the rice field. Next, for number two, we have the green leaf hopper. So from the word itself, the leaves is the primary uh, source. Uh, the green leaf hopper usually when it's the, uh, the, the green leaves of the plants. And then for number one, we have, of course, the trips. This kind of insect or pest is commonly present among the rice farmer. Usually this one is very wet, harmful in the palai or rice production. Next, for question number eight. For question number eight, we have, what are the different kinds of vegetative propagules? Again, what are the different kinds of vegetative propagules? I think this is quarter number three, lesson number five. Again, if you have your handouts with you class, Try to review what are the different kinds of vegetative propagules. This is under quarter three, lesson five. Five, four, three, two, and one. Again, I'm waiting for your answers. Okay, I'm still looking for your answers. Someone is answering. Okay, I will select one from you to get the plus 10 or the top one possible answer. Okay, I'm still looking. What are the different kinds of vegetative propagules? Okay, so I'm, I'm still looking. Whoever gets the top one answer, the fastest to get the top one answer will get a prize from me. Okay, so what is our five, number five answer? Number five, we have Forms. So this is usually common among what? 
among uh, what we call uh, black pepper. So this is the kind of propagation for black pepper. Number four, we have stem cuttings. So stem cuttings, usually, usually this is very common in plant propagation for grapes. Okay? So meron, uh, someone is answering corns, so that is not our top answer. Number three, we have slips. Okay, slips, it is very common among gabi or what we call gabi plants. Okay, next number two, we have suckers. Okay, this is very common in propagation of banana. Okay, so suckers is number two. And what will be our top one answer? Top one answer, we have runners. So I'm looking, okay. Someone is answering runners. So may I have congratulations to Erica Nell Andres of grade 9-3. You have a prize coming from me. You got the top answer for runners. Again, uh, please notify me, uh, Miss Erica Nell Andres coming from grade 9-3. Please message me afterwards. You have a prize coming from me. You got the correct answer for runners up as your top when answer for the different kinds of vegetative propagules. Again, congratulations to Erica Nell Andres of grade 9-3. So please claim your prize to me after our segment. Please notify me. Okay, let's proceed with question number nine. Question number nine, what are the different PPE in agriculture? Again, what are the different PPE or personal protective equipment being used in agriculture? Five, four, three, two, and one. Again, what are the different PPE being utilized or being used in agriculture? Okay, no corresponding price for this answer. Later on, uh, I will give. Okay, so for question number nine, ready? For number five, we have sunglasses. For number five, we have sunglasses. So uh, what is our top answer perhaps? So number four, we have gloves. So this is usually used as our PPE in agriculture and horticultural purposes. Next, number three, we have boots. So someone is answering boots already. Okay, so that is our number three answer. Then for number two, we have respirator. Okay, respirator is our top two answer. And what is our top one answer? Are you ready? Someone is answering goggles. Someone is answering boots. Someone is answering outer clothing. Are you ready for our top answer? It is what? Face shield. Of course, it is not only in this time of pandemic that we are going to use face shield. Also in agriculture, as our protective personal equipment, we use face shield to protect us from the different elements during our agriculture and horticultural activity. Next, for question number 10. For question number 10, I want you to list down the, uh, the most important things you miss at Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School. Again, what are the things you miss at Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School. I will give, I will give a price. Who among you could give me the number one answer? Again, what are the things you miss at Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School? I will give a price to anyone who can give me the top answer. I think with this kind of pandemic, you already miss. Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School. Don't worry, I miss you too. Okay, for five, for number five answer. For number five answer, we have practice. This is usually common among my grade eight students before. 
Someone is being utilized by means of an excuse letter knocking at the faculty room. Sir, pa-excuse po kami, may practice po kami. And this is also the things that I surely miss. Minsan kakatok sa faculty room, may dalang sulat si Presidente. Sir, pa-excuse po kami, may practice lang po kami. So this is almost one of the things that I surely miss. What about number four? Number four, we have Kabayani. I hope that each and every one of you, especially you, grade 9 student, during practice or during lunch break or any break that uh, you have at Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School, Kabayani is one of the things that you surely miss among being a Del Pilarian. Okay, what about number three? What about number three? I think this is usually the things you really, you really miss at Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School. Students, are you ready for number three answer? Canteen. Okay, so like for instance, I'm here now at Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School. During the time na wala pang pandemic, nagkakasalo-salubong tayo sa canteen, diba? nakakamiss. So one year uh, before. Diba? So the canteen is surely miss na miss nyo na. Diba? So what about number two? So sabi nga nung iba sa number two, eto. Hindi ka Del Pilar yan kung hindi mo to totally namimiss. Ano kaya yun? Number two answer, we have the Hilong Center. Diba? So this is actually the things that hindi ka daw magiging Del Pilar yan pag hindi mo na miss ang Hilong Center. Well, actually, during the time na hindi pa tayo nasa pandemic era, so ba? Diba? So, some of your classmates, minsan nahihilo, dadali nyo sa Hilong. At dito tuluyang maghihilong ang sugat ng nakaraan. What about the top one answer? Top one answer, I will give additional or plus or what we call price for the number one answer, what is the thing that you usually miss or you surely miss at Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School? Are you ready? Okay, I'm still looking for possible answer. Wala pang nakakatama ng sagot. May sumasagot cutting classes. May sumasagot gym. May sumasagot CR. Ano kaya yung number one na nami miss ng karamihan? Especially yung mga grade 9 students ko ngayon. Ano kaya o sino kaya yung nami-miss nila ngayon sa Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School? Tao kaya to Bagay o pangyayari? Let's find out. Our top answer. Walang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Our top answer. Ito daw talaga yung tunay nilang nami-miss sa Marcelo H. Del Pilar National High School. Tcharan! Ayan. Diba? So, salamat naman at nami-miss nila ako. Okay? So, that is our top answer. Si Sir Archie daw, ang totoong nami-miss ng mga karamihan, kabataan, del pilayan, especially ng mga grade 9 student. Huwag kayong mag-alala. Miss na miss ko na rin kayo. Pasasaan ba? At pagkatapos ng pandemyang ito, tayo ay muling magkakasama-sama at makikita natin ang ngiti ang bawat isa. Okay? So, I have here a bonus question. Okay? So, kung ako ang tatanungin ninyo, ano naman yung top 5 sa buhay ko? Okay? So, I have list down my top 5 priorities or top 5 best in my life. Okay? So, top 5 in Sir Archie's life. I'm looking for top 3. Again, whoever answers or whoever gets the top three answer will get, again, an additional price to me. Again, I'm not looking for the top one answer in this category or in this question. I'm looking for the top three answer. So, plus five ka na, meron ka pang price sa akin. Again, what are the top five in Sir Artie's life? I'm looking for the top three or number three possible answer. Okay? For top five, for top five 
Of course, para sa akin, number five, friends. Without friends, of course, I need someone to lean on. So that is what, that's what friends are for. Next, number four. Number four, what is my number four or top four in my life? Of course, number four is the kind or the nature of my work. Okay? So you, as my student, I did my job, I did my work just to fulfill the learnings that you must have. Okay, for number three answer. For number three answer, what is the top five in my life for number three? Whoever gets this one will get additional plus five and will get a cash, uh, sorry, not actually a cash price, a price from me. Okay? So I'm looking, I'm still looking for your answer for question number for top three. In my top five in Sir Archie's life. Number three, someone is answering students. Of course, nasa priority ko pa rin kayo. Pero what is or who is my number three priority or uh, top three in my life? Number three, of course, my very own special someone, Miss Trixie from Calaocan City. She is my number three in my life. Okay? What? Okay, so no one is get, no one gets the correct answer for top three. And I want to take this great opportunity to greet in advance Ma'am Trixie from Bago Silang, Caloacan City and advance happy birthday this coming June 17. Number two, we have of course, number two is my family. Of course, without them, I'm I'm not here. Okay? So, family. And then, I want to extend then my greetings to the father of the family. Uh, happy Father's Day po sa lahat ng ama. Okay? Of course, my number one. Of course, without him, tayo tayo. Okay? So, that is my number uh, top five in my life. Number one is, of course, our Almighty God. Number two, family. Number three, of course, my special someone. Number four, my nature of work. And number five, the kinds or the different friends, including you. Because for me, you are not just my student. You are my friend. Okay, let's proceed with our lesson for today. But before that, Let's have our learning objectives. Thank you for participating in our top five quiz. So again, please notify me, Miss Erica Nell Andres of grade 93 for your price because you got a answer in my previous top five quiz. Okay. Our learning objectives for this lesson. Learners are expected to, number one, you need to identify recycling and composting. Again, at the end of this lesson, learners are expected to identify recycling and composting. Second, you need to perform different recycling and composting of farm waste. And lastly, you need to recognize the importance of processing plant debris and waste. So I think it is more important for us how recycling and composting is being a part of our lives. So don't waste your time and don't tell to someone or to everyone that still you are a waste. Because sabi nga ng iba, bas, di, di basta basta basura. Because basura misan, dyan may pera. And that is everything that we need to discuss for this morning. So what is composting farm waste? Biodegradable waste comprises nearly majority of the waste product produced in the farm. For this reason, it is suggested to do composting. But not all materials can be recycled or can be done for composting. 
Composting is the conversion of biodegradable waste, especially those are going to decay or decayed waste, into soil enhancer and conditioner that aids in the growth and development of crops. The byproduct of composting is called compost from the word uh, composting. Of course, the byproduct is compost. Okay. Next, we have the different step in composting. Number one, we have to identify the site or the site selection. So what are the site or possible site that we need to select for us to have our compost? A small vacant lot at your farm or backyard can utilize for composting. Again, what is a site selection? You may choose either a small vacant lot at your farm or backyard that can utilize for composting. There you have it. So a small vacant lot or a backyard that can be utilized for your composting uh, purposes. Next, what is the second step or what is the second uh, things that we need to consider? Number two, we have, you are going to choose the structure. So what are the different structures, by the way, that you're going to choose? Composting can be done in the following. Letter A, we have pit. Okay. So there you have it. A pit, you are going to dig at least uh, a hole is uh, on the land, then you're going to wet. You're going to do the different uh, decayed materials underneath the compost pit. Letter B, we have the compost heap or simply heap. There you have it. So this is actually a very common wherein you're going to wet. Use different uh, materials compared to the what we call compost uh, heap. Next, we have the compost bin. So usually, if you have no vacant lot or you have no backyard that you can be utilized for composting, you can use either the compost pit, the compost heap, and either the compost bin. This is actually a kind of container wherein you can use this one for your composting purposes. It so happened that uh, each and every one of you, especially those who are living in a what we call industrialized uh, village, there's no backyard or even vacant lot. So that's not a problem for you to have or do the composting. If you so happen that you have no backyard or you have no vacant lot to utilize, you can use either the compost heap, compost feed, or the compost bin. Next. You can also use the chicken wire or mess wire, something like this. Again, we have the deep, uh, the four. We have the four different methods or structure that can be utilized in case that you have no backyard or you have no you have no backyard or you have no vacant lot to be used for your composting purposes. So again. You can use either a hip, a feet, a bin, or a chicken wire or mesh wire to what to be your uh, to do your composting uh, purposes. Next, we have the different step in composting. Number three, you need to layer the materials. So how you are going to layer the materials? Number one, a good compost is composed of brown and green. What does it mean? Browns are carbon-rich materials such as twigs, leaves, grass, cuttings, small stem, manure, ash, sodas, and others. From the word brown, usually these are what? These are the what? Uh, these are examples that are carbon-rich materials. And what about greens? Greens are those waste materials that contain nitrogen and can be found in the farm and kitchen. These are green leaves, flowers, fruits, and vegetable peelings, and leftover example egg shell. So in order for you to layer the different kinds of materials, you need to what? 
you need to combine or compose different browns and green. So, kailangan yung brown and green magkasama sila. So, hindi kailangan na do-dominate yung brown, hindi rin kailangan na do-dominate si green. So, kailangan in proportion silang dalawa. Either a combination of brown and green, which are either carbon-rich or those that contain nitrogen. So, that is the step number three. You need to layer the materials. Either you are going to compose it with brown and green. Next. Add layer until your compost has been full. Okay? So this time, as you add different kinds of layer, for example, you have your already brown and green. Then, you're going to add another layer that, uh, that can be able your compost to be totally full. Okay? So kailangan yung compost pit natin, compost heap, ay mapuno with these different kinds of layer. So, for example, you have already the brown and green. Don't hesitate or wag na wag nyong uh, titigilan hanggat hindi na pupuno. Yung tinatawag natin na ating compost bin, compost heap, compost pit. So, kailangan wait until your compost has been totally full or talagang puno na siya. Next. Number five, maintain your compost. So what or oh, when is the time that your uh, your compost has been has been used and has been utilized? You may turn the compost using any of the following tool. Number one, mix the upper layer to the lower layer to speed up the decomposition process. So you need what? You need to mix the upper and the lower layer to speed up the decomposition process. So, in meaning to say, you need to mix the different browns, the different greens, the different layer, so that there is a what we call uh, the decomposition process may, uh, may speed up or may take place. So, kailangan kasi talaga ma-decompose si, si, si brown at si green. So, kailangan we totally mix both the upper layer and the lower layer of our compost. Next, keep the layer of the soil moist. Cover it with banana leaves or coconut leaves during rainy days. Okay, so very common nowadays that we are now in the rainy season. So in order for you to maintain your compost, you need to what? You need to cover it with banana leaves or coconut leaves during rainy days. But during uh, during summer, you need to what? You need at least to moist the soil so that the process of decomposition is speeding up. Okay? So again, keep the layer of the soil moist during sunny season. Then when uh, rainy days, you need to cover that with banana leaves or coconut leaves. So what is the purpose of this one? It speeds up. The decomposition process. Next. Number six, when is the time to harvest your compost? Again, when is the time you need to harvest your compost? A good compost should possess dark, crumbly, and smell like soil. During our class in grade 8, grade 7, one of during the orientation, been discussing to you, my dear student, bawal sa klasiko, sa agriculture, yung maart. Something that we need to possess because in composting, it smells like something. A good compost should possess dark, crumbly, and smell like soil. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, during orientation pa lang, minsan minamaliit natin ang sektor ng agrikultura. Yak, Kadiri, but still, it is the one or it is the farmer that picks up the word. Kaya nga during orientation pa lang, sinasabihan ko na, na ang iba sa inyo na we need to what? You need to uh, not totally be what? Maart or maarte ang tinatawag sa agriculture because talagang dito, talagang you need to what? Talagang dito mapupotikan ka, talagang dito you need to 
uh, develop your own compost, which is something that smells like soy. Next, harvest compost having that kind of characteristic. Let the remaining unprocessed compost to continue its dank composition. For instance, nakikita natin na hindi pa lang nagtetake or nag undergo yung process ng decomposition. Wait until such time that the remaining unprocessed compost to continue its decomposition process. So wag natin titigilan o wag muna natin i-harvest yung ating compost until such time na lahat ng nasa compost natin ay nag undergo na or na-process na ng, ng what we call decomposition. Next. After harvesting your compost, you may now use it to your garden as fertilizer. Sometimes sasabihin ng iba, sir, kadiri, yak, uh, may amoy. Because some things that you need to discover is that the dirty, the compost is, yun yung magagamit natin na fertilizer among our garden plot. Or our uh, garden plot, rather. So after harvesting your compost, you may now use this one in your garden for your fertilizer purposes. Next, you can mix it to the soil or making a compost tea for the plant. So sometimes when you have your different compost, sometimes yung iba, we need mix din yung sa soil as your enhancer in making a compost tea for the plant. It is more appropriate for us to use this kind of organic fertilizer for the purpose of soil enhancer or making our plants grow healthier. Next, let's proceed with recycling. We are done with composting. So we have done, uh, we are through with composting. Let's proceed with recycling. Not always can be turned into compost. Some do not contain organic compound and cannot be decomposed. These are called done biodegradable. So not always ay pepedin nating i-compost o yung iba pepedin nating silang gawing recyclable materials. Next, this waste is solid in nature and made of different materials. Again, hindi lahat ng waste ay pepedin nating daanin sa pagko-compost. Sometimes Yung iba ay di na de decompose that's what we call non-biodegradable. This waste is solid in nature and made of different kinds of materials. That's why recycling must take place. To make this material valuable and proti profitable, we can perform recycling. Kaya nga minsan, during our normal classroom setup, minsan, uh, yung mga materials na ginagamit natin na hindi naman talaga totally used for composting, that's the only time that we can use that one as our recyclable materials. And I think during your PETA number one or PETA number two during your second grading or the performance task that I gave you in recycling, I, I ask you to make your own decorative plant pot coming from recyclable materials. And some of you uh, come up with the desired at output that uh, I want. So napakaganda ng mga gawa ninyo na decorative uh, plant pot using different recyclable materials. Okay, next. The process of converting waste materials into new product is what we call recycling. So once you have converted something coming from waste and turned that one into a useful product, that is what we call recycling. So meaning to say from a different waste material, then you come up with a new product. That's how recycling takes place. Kaya nga misan, may mga bagay na tinuturing nating basura at tinuturing nating hindi na napapakinabangan when converted to something which is a new product, much more may magagawa pa palang mas magandang product out of those kind of waste material. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, don't ever think na ang buhay nyo ay isang waste or basura lamang. Because gaya na sinabi ko kanina, kahit na basura kang naituturing, 
meron ka pa ring halagat. Next. So what are the different recyclable materials? Number one, we have the paper. Yan. So paper is one of the recyclable materials nowadays. Diba? So marami tayong pwedeng gawin for paper as our recyclable materials. Next, we have bottles. So there is the example. So bottle as a recyclable materials. So what are the uh, the things that out of the bottle we could create flower base out of paper we could what uh, we could utilize that one and use that kind of paper for for our uh, handicraft purposes. Okay, so those are recyclable materials. Hindi to pepe din natin compost because this is non biodegradable materials. Hindi sila nabubulok. Papel at bote is what we call intended only for recycling and not for composting. Next, we have number three, plastic. So plastic, so ito, tinanong ko kanina, anin namin miss nyo? Canteen. During canteen, during recess time, saan damo ka ng mga plastic materials or empty bottles ang nagkalat? But then all of a sudden, by means of recycling, we use that plastic for order for us to create a new product coming from the plastic materials. Okay, next, metals. Okay, so this is non-biodegradable. So hindi sila nabubulok, hindi siya pwedeng gamitin for what we call composting purposes. So we try to use this one for what? For our recyclable materials that is turned out to be a new product coming from waste material. So we have plastic, metal, paper, bottles. So those are recyclable materials considered at waste. But then all of a sudden, we are what? We could be able to come up with a new product coming from those recyclable materials. And then what are the importance of recycling? Number one, it conserves natural resources. Of course, when we are recycling, we are what? Uh, we are conserving our natural resources. So instead of uh, using again a what we call uh, new resources, we could do what? We could reuse that kind of uh, recyclable materials in order for us to conserve our nature. Next, number two, it minimizes pollution. Of course, when we recycle something, out of the what we call we controlled or we try to minimize the amount of pollution both on the land, air, water, and the different kinds of pollution that will go into contaminate the different uh, environment that we have. Next, it gives income opportunity to everyone. Of course, when we are recycling, minsan nga uh, gawa sa recycle yung mga tinatawag natin ng mga product. So it gives what? Extra income, an opportunity to everyone. You among uh, you as a student, like what I have said before, kailangan yung mga gawa natin ng recyclable materials is something that is marketable. Yung pwede natin isell sa market and we are going to what? We are going to use that one as our income, an opportunity to have our own business someday coming from recyclable materials. Kaya nga tuwan-tuwa ako sa inyong class na nakagawa kayo ng mga different kinds of decorative uh, flower, uh, decorative plant pot coming from recyclable materials. Misan may mga gumawa ng tinatawag natin ng mga recyclable materials kung saan sila yung tinamit nila, yung mga different uh, bottle or empty bottle, plastic bottle. Then they come up with uh, Optimist, uh, optimistic and very useful product coming from recyclable materials. Next, it develops creativity among people. Ayan. So, misan binigyan ko kayo nung paano gagawin doon sa tinatawag natin ng pagre-recycle. Some of you try to use their creativity and innovation. Diba? You come up with different uh, plant pot. Minsan, meron pang mga hugis baboy yan, may mga hugis uh, different uh, farm animal kung saan pinubutasan ninyo at nilalagyan natin ng mga different uh, design at yun yung gagamitin natin na pinaka plant pot natin. So, coming from recycled materials. Next. 
it saves energy. Of course, pa paano nakaka-save ng energy yan? Pag gumamit tayo ng mga recyclable materials, hindi na natin kailangan gumamit pa or gumamit ng other source of energy coming from that one. Next, it creates livelihood and employment. Of course, it gives what? Income and opportunity to everyone in order for them to have at least an income someday and a source of livelihood and employment. This is an agri documentary film that has been done. Please watch our agri documentary film presented by Grade 8 last time before the pandemic. Derpilarians, sa loob ng apat na markahan, para sa taong pampara lang ito, nasaksiyan ko ang inyong pagsusumigap at ang inyong pagpuporsige na harapin ang natatanging edukasyon para sa new normal. Sa bawat performance task na aking binibigay, sa bawat answer sheet na inyong pinapaso, Tunay na pinanahaglagaan ninyo ang edukasyon na isa sa tinuturing nating pinakamalaking kontribusyon at pinakamalaking ambag ng ating mga magulang sa atin sa panahong ito. Padapain man tayo ng pandemyang ito, ngunit hindi ang ating hangarin na matuto. Del Pilarians tayo, pandemya lang sila. Hanga ako sa determinasyon ng bawat isa sa inyo. May pandemya man o wala. Tunay ngang may dunong dangal at diwa. Yan ang makabagong kabataang del pilarian ng makabagong panahon. Susubukin man tayo ng anumang uri ng pandemya, ngunit hindi ang ating layunin na matuto. Hanga ako sa inyo at napagtagumpayan nyo ang taong pampaaralang ito. Sa mga magulang, 
pinapaabot ko po sa inyo ang aking pagbati rin dahil kaagapay ninyo ay kaagapay kayo namin at ng inyong mga anak habang ating sinusuong ang tinatawag nating pandemyang ito. Sa mga magulang, patuloy niyo pong suporta ang kaming mga guru at ang inyong mga anak laban sa pandemyang ito. Sama-sama po nating tutukan at sama-sama nating subaybayan ang ating mga anak upang lalo nating mapagtagumpayan ang pandemyang ito. Kayong mga kabataan del Pilarian ang may tuturing naming ultimate big winner para sa taong ito. Hindi man tayo nakita personal at nakita natin ang mga ngiti ng bawat isa. Pinagbuklod naman tayo ng makabagong teknolohiya. Mawala man ang, in ang ating internet connection, ngunit hindi ang ating connection sa bawat isa. Pinabati ko kayo, makabagong kabataang Del Pilarian sa pagsuong natin under this new normal. With us, dito sa TLE Agricultural, uh, uh, Agricultural Arts Department, pinabati namin kayo dahil napagtagumpayan ninyo ang taong pampara lang ito under Agricultural Crops Production for Grade 9. Muli ang aking pasasalamat sa inyo. Ipagpatuloy nyo lang ang nasimulan ninyo dahil sa susunod, yan ay pakikinabangan ninyo. Sabi nga natin, magtanim kayo ngayon, bukas meron kayong aanihin. Isang pasasalamat muli ang aking pararating sa aking punong guro o sa ating punong guro, Dr. Maria Victoria Bibo, kay Ma'am Berhenia de Guzman, our department head, TLE family, TLE teachers, former student ko, at mga students ko ngayon from 9-1, 9-2, 9-3, 9-15, to my advisory 9-22, sa mga, mga kaibigan, of course, maraming maraming salamat po. At patuloy nating suportahan ang mga kabataang Del Pilarian upang lalo nilang mapagtagumpayan ang hamon ng panahon, may pandemya man o wala. Again, ako po ang inyong Sir Archie Villanca Pajardo, ang kakwela mo. Now officially signing off. Kamusta? Ako si Teleo, ang batang teleradyo. Abangan niyo ako at ang aking mga kwento. La 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 Wow! Ang ganda naman ng gusali. Nagandaan ka rin ba? Iyan ang unang gusali ng Marcelo na noon ay Bulacan High School. Binuksan nito ng mga Amerikano noong 1906 sa bakura ng Kapitolyo. Nilarawan nito bilang the best and the most modern schoolhouse sa Pilipinas noong panahong iyon. Cool, di ba? Alam mo ba? Ang unang gusali ng paaralan ay makikita sa logo ng Marcelo. Cool! Yan na muna for now. See you next time. Ako ulit si Teleo, ang batang teleradyo na nagsasabing, Aming dakilang paaralan ay may dakilang nakaraan. Great school, great history. Bye-bye! your service. Kaya naman, ang feedback mo, suggestions nyo ay mahalaga sa amin to improve our programs on air and online. Para alam ni teacher yung strengths as well as the things in your mind na mas makatutulong sa mas effective na pagkatuto sa Teleradio. Please take time to send your feedbacks via Teleradio Mew which you can access by scanning the QR code 
on the right or typing the URL provided here bit.ly slash 3 O R V A Y 9 One more this time you follow bit.ly slash 3 O R V A Y 9 Hey, I send your hashtag TBH or hashtag RT dito sa Teleradium U kung saan ang feedback mo, suggestions nyo, ay mahalaga sa Teleradio. Makinig, manood na sa Teleradio. Makinig, manood na sa Teleradio. Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo. Sa gitna ng mapanubok na pa